The reason why I wanted to do this is because um, what I want to be able to help create at Motif is the first minimally invasive solution for mental health disorders, particularly for people who suffer from treatment resistant conditions. And we heard from Ignacio, the rising star, a really beautiful description of what that looks like. And in the case of major depressive disorder, as a reminder, it's about 30% of people who don't respond to two or more uh, frontline antidepress uh, antidepressant medications. In the United States, that's about 2.8 million Americans. And we've talked to many of them, and they reach a level of desperation, which is a little bit hard, I think, to comprehend unless you have friends or family or loved ones, or perhaps a personal experience. Tyler, for example, um, told us that he got to a point where he was willing to try anything to try to get better. He had gone through multiple failed doses of medication, decades of struggling against this disease, and one year received 27 uh, courses of electroconvulsive therapy. But what's, I think, really remarkable for people today, thanks to the work from uh, folks like Ignacio, is that we're beginning to learn that brain stimulation, the selective activation of targeted circuits can help people who don't respond to their drugs. It can activate circuits like what Dr. Paul talked about by targeting receptors, but instead we can target them spatially if we can't find a drug that can hit that specific target. And we know this works because of a technology called transcranial magnetic stimulation, which I show on the screen here. And the way that this machine works is you go to the doctor's office and they put a big magnet over a region of the brain associated with the executive function. And they can stimulate that brain area with centimeter scale precision and increase the activity of the executive function network to help people who struggle to get out of bed in the morning, to take a shower, to call their friends, to do the things that they know they need to do to get better. They can do that because we can activate that circuit. The catch is that in order for this technology to work, you have to go to the doctor's office and sit next to that machine. Now, if you don't live there, uh, you live in a rural community, a beautiful place like, well, Napa actually has a few facilities like this, but where I come from in Texas, if you're out in uh, West Texas, there's nothing like this for you. And it's not just a one-time thing. You have to go in five days a week for six weeks. And at that point, your therapy may last you for 11 months. We heard about relapse from ketamine being only a few months. These therapies only work if you can continue to modulate that circuit. And so I looked at this as an engineer, and I thought maybe we could take this technology that kind of sits in a doctor's office and miniaturize it. What if you could take it home? What if it could be an implant, a minimally invasive implant, that could provide that same therapeutic action, but perhaps for the rest of your life? Now, to do that, um, it was a lot of engineering. And I'll summar summarize this, I guess, in one, one video. But we spent about a decade in my lab thinking about how we could miniaturize technologies. And the big breakthrough came when we figured out how to deliver energy into a millimeter-sized device. And it's using a technology that we patented called magnetoelectrics. But what it means is that a device no longer has to have a battery implanted. Without a battery, we can make this thing about the size of a pea. And at that size, it can be implanted uh, in about a 20-minute outpatient procedure and never touch the surface of the brain because it's so thin, uh, it's thinner than the thickness of the skull. So no brain surgery, outpatient, go home that day. And then from that point forward, you can have access to the same type of therapy like transcranial magnetic stimulation with something that could be activated by iPhone or a smartwatch. The device itself provides a pattern of electrical stimulation that engages that executive function circuit. And in fact, it drives neural activity at that specific region. And by engaging that target, you can receive that therapeutic benefit when and where you need it for the rest of your life without having to go back to the clinic. So this is one of the things that really excited me as an engineer is thinking about kind of a sci-fi way for, me to, for us to change how we think about treating mental illness. But that's not gonna get us all the way there. For me to take something like this to market, we also need to create a successful business. The amount of money it takes to go through the FDA process to get it clearance on an active implantable is significant. And so I spent the last year and a half and with some support from One Mind figuring out how can we create a successful business to bring this therapy to the people that need it. And so we talked to the people with treatment resistant depression, folks like Tyler and Aaron, people who are like, yes, I need this. I am desperate for this. And I wanted to understand how do they get there? And in all the cases, the journey looked similarly. It looked like going to your PCP, 
It's a difficult case. They then go to an interventional psychiatrist. These are the people that prescribe ketamine, TMS, ECT. We talked to the interventional psychiatrist. And we're like, how many people like Aaron and Tyler do you see every single month, every single year? And it turns out that they, there's almost 100,000 people like Aaron and Tyler. And if you look at the cost of implantables, that's about a $2 billion market. So we can create a successful business for these people in extreme need. And it actually matches a business model that's very familiar. It's like referring out to a pharmacist. Instead, the psychiatrist refers out to a surgeon. Surgeon does a procedure. Insurance company pays for um, the implantation. It goes back to that same doctor. So you get, that same doctor gets to treat the patient just like they would be managing them on a pharmaceutical medication, but it's an electronic medication. I've been incredibly fortunate to be able to bring onto the team people who know how to do this. This is a lot of work, right? It's new technology, it's med device, it's clinical work, it's neurosurgery, and I'm, uh, I'm lucky to work with folks who have over 50 years of experience at places like Medtronic and Boston Scientific, um, as well as neurosurgeons with over 5,000 clinical procedures between them. And where we hope to get to is by 2025, be able to begin clinical trials in our first group of patients and see how we can begin to treat people who suffer from this condition. And I want to kind of leave you with what we hope at Motif is a vision for the future and kind of what motivates me. And what we'd like to imagine is that there is a world in which people with resistant mental health conditions have the opportunity to get well, regardless of where they live, how much money they make, if they have a job that prevents them from having to go to the clinic on a daily basis, they have kids. They can get well and they can stay well because their therapy can continue to be activated when they need it on demand. And I think that there's another thing that we have with electronic medicine, which is unique compared to pharma, which is the fact that the, we have the opportunity to improve the therapy over time for the people who get the devices. So we can learn from the data how to improve your therapy. And it's not just that your therapy is going to get better over time, but each person who uses that device, that data can improve the therapy for every other person with that indication. So I think this idea of co-development with our users and the engineers to create a future where we have ever-evolving, improved electronic medicine is something that I really look forward to. And um, we have, we're set up down over there at the small, at the house, I don't remember the name, sorry, Aaron. Stuck to your house. Uh, we have uh, our devices, you can come see them. Um, uh, I'd love to talk to you more about, uh, about that and you can get hands on with our prototypes. So thank you very much for your attention and thank you to the One Mind community. Thank you, Jacob.